Greetings, Shani. Shani B, how you doing? You good? Blessings, 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 blessings. Good. We don't do this often enough, man. Top of 2022. I'm glad that we're getting to, to jump into uh, a little bit about your forthcoming column, which is going to be in the February issue of The Voice newspaper. Um, an exciting one. Um, you've, 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 you've gone in a little bit, Shani. <laughs> I get it's good, though. It's good. It's, good. It's, it's good. It's good. We need, we need to have these discussions. We need to kind of, um, yeah, broach these subjects. And for those who are listening and wondering what subjects we're talking about, Shawnee has, <laughs> Shawnee's got five points that he thinks are going to elevate the Caribbean music business, industry, players in the game, um, because it needs elevating. The question or hypothesis being, does Caribbean music have a seat at the bigger table? Surely you've gone in and identified why in your piece you don't feel it does and why you feel it could do and the ways to go about it. Now, this is a, I guess, a problem and solution kind of type uh, approach that not a lot of people have in the game. They kind of identify either the issue or how best they think to save the day. You kind of try to come at it from a 360 point of view, but in your own words, um, why did you think that this needed tackling? Do you know what? In the piece, I don't actually even mention, well, I think I mentioned a few other genres, but I didn't want to speak about any other genres. Um, just to clarify, does Caribbean music have a seat at the table? 100% and we are at the table. But as a Garveyite, I understand that sometimes that if you don't have economical power, a foundation to build off of, nobody ain't going to take you seriously. And that's the problem that we've got. If we're looking at influence all day long, you listen to every kind of rhythm out of the road, you listen to some of the way that the vocals are, are done, you listen to slang, you walk in the streets, you see the culture of the Caribbean all day long. So do we have a seat at the table? 100%. But are we at the right place on the table? Definitely not. You get what I'm saying? And I feel, I'm going to say it now, um, I think a lot of these discussions have come about, especially now, because Afrobeats is at the weight that it is. And one of the things that people used to say about Caribbean music, why it doesn't cross the boundaries, is because of language. Now we can turn around categorically and say, that's rubbish. Because if you listen to Burner Boy, yeah, um, any one of the Afrobeats songs, them, you will hear them speaking in their mother tongue, singing in their mother tongue. So... And then I got into the clubs on the weekend and I see a little white girl from Cambridge singing along with Burner. So this whole conversation of language, let's take that out of the conversation straight away. We have to look deeper at it. And one of the things, especially, I, I just had a conversation with somebody. One of the things to see the success of Afrobeats right now, it's really made us with Caribbean music have to look at ourselves to say, where's our strength? Because we've definitely got a lot of influence, but are we seeing any of our artists really do what Wiz has done recently at O2 or a Burner would do or a Davido would do or um, to see the rise of somebody like a Thames or something like that? Like there always seems to be that ceiling that we hit or that cutoff point. You get what I'm saying? Even if we look at somebody like Coffee right now, Coffee Rose, and then it seemed like that ceiling came around. You get what I'm saying? And I'm seeing artists that came after Coffee, that Coffee even told me about, that have risen and kind of elevated past her. So we have to start looking at why is this happening? And as somebody that lives and breathes this music 24 sevens, I see the mistakes all the time. I see the issues all the time. Let me ask you, let me ask you something then, just to play devil's advocate. Is it not simply a case of it being Afrobeat's time? What like you talk, you, you talk about a whiz and, and all those artists, and, and I, I get it, but when when a sun splash and all those, you know, when when artists of 20 years ago were in their prime, reggae artists, Caribbean artists, I'm gonna say reggae. I, no, Caribbean, let's keep it Caribbean. Um they got to tour the world, their music was penetrating the charts and maybe not to the same degree, but obviously technology has changed things. Is it not just Afrobeats time? Just a question. I'll ask you a question for your question. Did we see 
are artists continue down the road that you may see where a burner a whiz or one of them is going i'm seeing a plan outside of the bus do you get what i'm saying to you i'm seeing traction outside of the bus like yeah we had all of that beanie man bounty all of them did what they had to do mad cobra did like we had our great shabaranks they all clapped it out shaggy all clapped it out of the park and a few of those names are still there you get what i'm saying but then what goes what goes beyond that um where the, does the music go with it or is it just the journey of the artists as such and these are the things that i look at all the time i look at the professionality of certain artists from certain genres compared to Wagwan in our world. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and sometimes it makes me beg the question, like, is Wagwan mm. with our artists? That's not to say that I've never sat down and wait on a hip hop and R&B artists up at one extra. That's not to say that I'm, I, I've done all of that. You get me? But you see when you're quay, quay, quay up in other realms of this thing, you can probably get away with diva behavior. You get what I'm saying? So there's certain things that I've seen. I don't want to call certain names because yeah. I would shake the industry, yeah? I sat down recently for two hours at a showcase waiting for one of our heavyweights to turn up and left. And I heard people in the audience saying, who do they think they are? They ain't even broken big like that as yet. I've heard that. I've heard promoters turn around and say they've tried to book an artist and they want X amount of bags. But this man over here is not taking all of that. And he's probably got more traction than him. Who do they think they are? But when you, you, know, are, when you yeah. sit down in an environment like that and you constantly hear these things, and a man that loves this music and does so much for this music and works like out of love, would it not be wrong of me to know that these conversations are going on and mm. not bring it back to my family and say, yo, we need to have a discussion? And no, I, I, think you're to I think you're totally right. And I think that that's, that's um, you know, for those two, you can't wait now to go and get the Voice newspaper uh, and read this column. That was, the, that was the crux of it that I got. It was clear to me, Shawnee, that you could have gone. You could have cut deeper with this piece, right? That was that was that was that was a lot. That was a lot. That was very clear for me. And it was also clear that you didn't want to, you didn't want to be too cantankerous. You didn't want to rock the boat too much. But this this issue of what you're touching on, a lack of professionalism. I wonder if it's an inherent byproduct of having experienced a moment two, three decades ago as Caribbean music, technological advancements enabling a new generation within this Afro scene, Afrobeat scene to really take advantage of a shifting landscape, right? So really... Are those technological advancements not available to all of us? But is there an inherent cultural attitude that's 100%. embedded so in, within one culture than another, right? So I'm saying the rise and rise of Afrobeats is kind of tallied with, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, right? Because I get all the points you're making. But I'm saying the rise of rise of Afrobeats is tallied with the exponential rise of tech availability. And with it has come great rewards, great exposure, and sowed a new inherent attitude towards professionalism. Because actually, if you look over the last couple of years, if you're a young Afrobeat star, we can get it. We can go and get it. And this is all they know. Whereas maybe there's a an artist who's been around for 10 years from the Caribbean, who's actually dealt with that old system, which wasn't as professional, which wasn't connected to tech, which then led to all these old habits to come in. I'm just asking what, what your right. opinion is uh, on the put, journey of both children. Let me put a conversation to you then. Mm. The wickedest thing is, this is like a football analogy, and I'm a QPR fan, so football is not my team, fam. <laughs> you get me? But one of the greatest teams that we've seen in the UK would have probably been Alex Ferguson's Man United team, yeah? And what happened with that team? That was a tip. I'm trying to think here, because I'm not a, a baller, brother, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about the gigs, Solskja, all of them. I'm sure I heard my friends tell me that a lot of that team 
came from the youth club, the youth team, yeah? That they brought through throughout those years. And they would have had to have gone through a lull period to have got to this period where the team has so gelled and moving like a squad. I equate that to the rise of um, other music genres, because I don't want to just keep on going on about this Afro. Yeah, of course, of course. Because it yeah. looks like sometimes it's like black versus black, and that, that's yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. Like we are all together. But I equate that to Wagwan with that squad of youths them over there. Because, bruv, when dance hall and Caribbean music was winning big, we were down the corner enjoying our life, you know, bruv. Man was out there burning, drinking, living life. During that time, I'm sure there was a lot of African news that was going unified. And now this tech that you talk of, they've got it all at their hands. Guys coming out with business study degrees, media degrees. Their squad is loaded. Not to say that that's not happening in our music, because when I go to Jamaica, especially, a lot of the new youths that you're coming, you're seeing coming through right now is youths that are schooled, educated, and you're seeing what they're doing. But guess what? A lot of them youths say that is doing that. They're not part of the trending hype. They're not part of this crew that's tatted up and bleached out and a talk up a bag of things. So the youths them that really have got the skills them to be able to go through, we're not even supporting them. We're not showing them no love because them is uptown. Them too mm. nice. You get what I'm saying? It's late that we show them love. It's late that we show them love. There's so many artists that I could call and say, yo, mm. you know, see the talent of this you here. But if them are going to dance, if them now feature upon certain podcasts where I chat all kind of madness, this, that, the other, they're not, they don't register. That's why I can genuinely say that we could probably see a lack of reggae coming true because it's not hype enough. It's not, it's not, it's not bright enough for Wagwan, especially in this world of IG, Insta, this, that, the other. If you're preaching righteousness, bruv, you're dead on IG, you know? People know why I hear that, you know? If you're preaching something quality, like people know why I hear that, I'll be a madness. You won't reach the bloggers then. And one of the reasons why I was so frightened of doing this and talking like this, because I have this thing that, I want to stay out of the mouth of the vloggers, fam. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't want to see me popping up on there. Shawnee said, rare, rare, rare. And this man, I clap back. That man, I clap back. This, that, the other. Because for me, that's just negativity, bro. You get what I'm saying? If you want to have a discussion with me, phone me. Let's chop it up. Have a proper reason. I don't want to be doing it over online and this, that, the other. And a lot of that fuels what we do. We need to get out of that. We need to get to a place where... And you, like, I could have done more than 800 words on this, you know? I know, I know this, bro. But I, could I have know done this. 800 <laughs> words on systems and structures alone. If I'm, let me talk about myself here, Joe. If a mm -hmm. man ring me and says, Shani, I want to book you. I say, all right, then, boom, call my agent. Boy, I'm in a depan agent thing in a Shani. What do you mean you're not on no agent thing? That's how I run my business. If I look around me and see X amount of people, of DJs that have got to a certain level, I would see what their systems and structures are and how they were able to elevate. So I put that in place. Our thing is still in the streets that want to hustle. A man want to throw money in my hand. I can't, I can't build my business in that kind of manner. I can't. They would, would always stay a hustle. We need to come out of this hustling mentality and know with the technological advances that everybody can wake up in the morning and run their thing proper. And that's what we need, John. Everything that I speak about in this piece, I have lived it. I have sat down and waited on artists for hours. I've ended up paying for artists to have to come to my studio for interviews. I, I, I you, you ask me, just don't ask me the names that are involved, but I would tell no, I, I know, you. I know better than that. I know better than that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, right? And you know, I'm. I, I'm asking the silly questions today. You're normally asking the questions, right? So, you know, we put them over the positive, good questions. So I'm asking for the, for, the, for the discussion. A couple of years ago, I saw Leo Cohen on The Breakfast Club. 
talk about Afro beats, man. It's coming. I'm telling you. And he was really telling those in the studio, like, they didn't know, for one. They might not have known. I don't know. We would have done known over here in the UK. But I found that interesting. I thought, wow, is that a signal? Is that, is that him putting whoever on notice to say YouTube as a platform is, going, is getting behind this 100%, which is another signal to the whole industry. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the Afrobeats thing. I'm not picking on Afrobeats. I'm just using that as a, a genre that's had an ascension, rapid ascension in the last few years, rightly so. Um, but I saw that as a signal to myself, well, I know what to expect now, don't I? For the next couple of years, there's going to be this hardcore focus on Afrobeats, not least because the pool of talent is there, whole of Africa and beyond, but because this massive vehicle at the at the at the precipice of technology is backing it. I've never heard such support for reggae music or music emanating from the Caribbean. False. What is funny? I actually. Um, sat down with Leo the other day for a power up session um, that the PRS team put together, and I interviewed him for an hour. And Leo is somebody that I admire from a long time because Def Jam Recordings, he's founded that alongside the likes or been part of it alongside the likes of Russell Simmons and that. And I've got a lot of respect for him because they are people that could see into the future. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? They know this music thing. They know what the word trend is. Not trending, but they know what the word trend, where the trends are going to be going. Now, I was fortunate enough to go to Kenya in 2004 and have been back and forth um, to the continent quite a bit during that time. During my first trip to Kenya, I saw the support that home gave African artists. Like, we never saw that. Why is that? Social media wasn't there. Bootlegging was crazy during that time. That's the way that we've always got our music, especially as black people, can hear shop, food shop, CD man is selling CD, mixtape. And that's one of the things that I actually feel that hurts dancehall and reggae, because how many times do you listen to track by track of a reggae song, or would you go on SoundCloud or YouTube and go and listen to the mix? Those numbers don't register on Spotify, you, um, Apple and all them kind of things. Our thing is always being a mix. This young man in the mix, DJ Kenny, you name it, always being a mix. But going back to Africa. So now, once there's a business model where bootlegging can slow down because of the accessibility of the music online, you will see the trend in numbers change. So if a man don't need to, like, buy a CD, but you can go on SoundCloud, you're going to be able to see who's going on SoundCloud, who they're listening to, YouTube, whatever, this, that, the other. What you have got right now is mass demographic supporting their yard. So once you put that on an international platform now, what's the um, population of Nigeria? 200 million, something like that? Mm -hmm. That's right. 200 million is 200 million no matter where you put it, you know? So if, if you've got a universal platform like YouTube and you've got 200 million people from Nigeria supporting Burner, Wiz, whoever, let's just say they get a fraction of that. You're going to see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million views like that. That's where a man like Leo that's sitting behind the table at YouTube, but I would presume would see that and even if he doesn't know the region, send somebody to the region to understand and see what going on in the region. So what you've got here is pure demographic. Like to see Beyonce flow in and say Shatawale, Ghana. You get what I'm saying? Like she's she not stupid. She knows that she's got, he's got like 100 million Africans ready to go fam. Spear and shield in hand, ready to support their artists. You get what I'm saying? And I feel that for me, that's what we are seeing in Africa is that the demographic, you can't beat demographic, fam. You can't just beat demographic. And to a voice, to a, a ASOS, to a Boohoo, to a YouTube, 
to a JD, to a Nike. Numbers is numbers, bro. Numbers is numbers. And that's why in the article, I what do I say? No, it's, it's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. Um, it's time that we join forces mm. for our best foot forward. Well, then on that, on that point, sorry to cut you, but on that point, um, popcorn, Gambia, numbers, right? Numbers. So what I'm seeing is there's a there's a link up, a connection. So you, you, you we earlier we, we talked about Afrobeats and Caribbean music, and there's all they're in separate genres. And it's like almost as if we're talking about them like they're fighting each other. So let me put it back together now, because it's a link up opportunity, I see. It's a time for us to come home as Africans, right? No matter where we are around the world. Can I stop you? We are saying that as Caribbeans, yeah? And Joe, me and you come from a generation of West Indian youths that tormented Africans, fam. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Right, but, but we come from that generation. But you I know, know what, what I'm talking about. Yeah, I bro. know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking if, about. If you say ABC to an African you from in the 70s or 80s, he, he knows what you mean. He knows, what you mean. He knows what you mean, bro. So, not to say we're, we're all brothers, you know, we're all black, 100%. And I get that. We keep saying it's time to join. I want to hear African you turn around and say that and be like, yeah, let's join. Because you know what? What you can't do, yeah, is deny the fact that when we was winning, we were turning around and saying, let's come and join a link up, fam. So why should a man openly just say, all right, then? Trouble times, let's link up. You know what I say? Allow the man them and let them have their glory, fam. That's what I say. What kind of link my, up my, my talk about? Allow my, them, let them have their glory, blood. Totally. My, my thing is even even for them, because it's almost like we're talking about them bringing me, right, in their time. It's not that. It's, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more saying to a popcorn and any other Caribbean artist touring Africa. I mean, I don't know the logistics. You're more immersed in this business than I am, right? But I, I, I'd have loved to see popcorn and friends, right? Being but exposed but, 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 to- I've done that in Ghana already. I'm not but, saying he hasn't done it. I'm just saying it should be- tell you something. When popcorn was in Ghana a couple of years ago, he did link up with a youth named Jay Dorobi, that is like one of the biggest streaming African artists from Ghana. He won the uh, uh, VJMAs the other day on a song called Poverty. He heard the song and he put a remix on it. So it all went when I talk about, I go on already, you know. Should be normal though, should be normal, part of the course. Like I should have seen that Gambia gig. I'm not, I'm not telling no one what to do. I'm just saying for me, this is what would create the link up, firm the tie and make people want to develop that, that first for connection so well if, if pop- um, some boy did it in um ghana with beanie the other day the man named roll yeah. out red no no beanie i want beanie to go with caribbean artists and expose them i want popcorn to go with caribbean artists and expose them um that's what i want and, and i'm saying that will t- firm the ties and expose those artists to an african audience that might not be in- invested in them or even know about these artists that are being brother the, I, I know this is what i'm trying to say them. Seeing that though, see what people saw with, with popcorn and Gambia. A lot of people, a super a lot of people, that's a shock. Mm. Right? And I'm saying so, seeing the link up, seeing that love from Africans to Caribbean artists. But then this leads to another point that I made in my article is that there's a big smoke screen financially when it comes to dancer, because what you're stating there is a great suggestion that pop can't should bring an artist with him and say, come, I'm going to offer you the stage. But do you feel that there's a possibility, and I'll ask you this question, knowing that the, the, the artists that we deal with, what do you think a man's going to tell pop can? <laughs> okay. I, I could kind of imagine that he might, uh, he might outprice himself, right? Um, <laughs> what kind, he might what outprice kind of himself. card I run, puppy? What kind he, of he card might not... I run? He might not see the opportunity for what it really is, and or she. What, but this is what we need to do to start yeah, to see the cup. opportunities mm. and to say, right, how is this opportunity going to break, take me from place A to place B? I, mm. it, that, I always put myself in it because I, I am, even though I'm a DJ, I'm still part of this community. I had to take a lot of L's to get to which part I am. 
I had to do a lot of stuff for free to get to which part I am. Um, I would always remember, when was it, 2005 or something like that, Dutty Wine come out, um, Tony Mataran. Me and Tony is like that, that's like my brother. And One Extra had a carnival event and he wanted to charge One Extra three bags. And I remember a man in the building like, we bust that song yeah, Sean, with the help of you. And it's like, money after run for carnival promo. I call Maggie, I'm going to say, you know what you do. It's a radio station you're working with, you know? They're the ones that's going to be supporting your music and your content. So you can't, you get me? And then he understood what it was. And these are, these are the things that a lot of these younger artists don't understand that you have to put in the work for many different platforms before you get to that place to be able to start charging. You get what I'm saying? And unfortunately, I, I don't think that that kind of fully connects in this time because I don't know how many people, and not just in music, in life overall, I don't, don't know how much worth this word holds anymore. Apprentice. And you know, when you serve your apprenticeship, you have to wall it, dog. You have to wall out before you reach to the next stage. And because of social media, YouTube, um, direct to consumer, a lot of people feel, I mean, I need to do apprenticeship no more. Whether you use an artist, painter, a decorator, or whatever, I've got the technological advances in my hand. I'm my own boss straight away. But you could do all of that. But you see what's in my head, it's called wisdom. Me, me passing that on to you is something so special because the other Jedis before me that came, I sat down with them and listened to them and just absorbed a lot of what was going on to learn. You have to serve your apprenticeship and with apprenticeship comes little money sometimes, no money sometimes. Sometimes I dig up and I'm gonna do an event and DJ at certain events and don't get a dime. But I know, say, next year, when them call me, money I got to run because, because I know I laid the foundation. Without judgment is Shawnee B's, Shawnee B's five-point plan that may help the position from the position he looks at the game. And the first one he puts in there is dropping the ego, which is essentially what you just talked about, right? It's uh, not just taking the L's, and those L's are lessons. You know what I mean? Not, they're not losses, they're lessons. They're actually going to fill your cup. <laughs> they're not going to reduce anything. Um, number two struck me as a good one. There seems to, to, so there have been so many missed opportunities for the music due to lack of management, right? Um, good management has been instrumental in my rise. You've mentioned it, you touched on it earlier in the interview. Who's teaching the managers of the future where Caribbean music is concerned? Well, this is why I chat about apprenticeship. You have to shadow somebody to be able to learn the business. You have to do certain jobs with me. A lot of good managers started off as roadies, as people just in the back background. And you're on the job in it every day. And then you get to see, rah, this man does that, that man does that, and this connects to that, and all the rest of it. And then you start to learn the terminologies, and then you start to understand um how certain things connects together and that's how you kind of grow into being a great manager so if you don't want to do the shadowing you can't wake up in the morning and say oh me a manager you haven't even done a college course uh, a uni course or no nothing like and that goes back to what i was chatting about enough youths from other places went and did events management bruv Man, then wake up in the morning and I think, oh, find a bar, find a club, secret location. I don't think that much of the business, dog. You know, say some man put on shows, though, and they don't even have a spreadsheet. Them, they even own Excel. So a man doesn't know what his incomes and the outgoings. So you don't even know what your profit or losses is going to be. You just know, say, oh, my make a money, dog. Make a money, dog. You can't tell a tax man that I did it here, brother. Right, that's if they're dealing with tax man. Listen, I'm going to move it on. You'd like to see more DJs and presenters taking the music seriously and not ringing off sound effects and thinking about how we deliver and present this music, Caribbean music. It seems to be a... And I'm part of that. 
I'm yeah, and, and so I want to. I really want to get your your view on this because that's a very subjective thing, right? And sometimes I think people like those touches about a DJ, and so they'll develop a fan base. People will follow them, and then they're the ones that are responsible for delivering the music, breaking tunes. People want them type of music first. That plates, blah blah blah. Um, I there's a couple of young youths I follow on YouTube, Instagram, uh, who were doing the same thing. They're like 10, 11. And they've got their headphones on, and they've got their, and they're, they're replicating what they see. This isn't going to change, surely. Who's who's presenting the music then? Who's presenting the music? Let me ask you a question. Name me five other DJs that you know could come and present a dancehall reggae show, Caribbean music, after the likes of myself, um, Ernie's. Um, yeah, Martin they're Jerry, gonna be all those names. Rant, no, but show me the next squad that's coming true. <laughs> Not where Caribbean music is concerned. So if we ain't got that, where's the representation gonna come from on radio? Who's gonna sit in the seat that I hold now? I when I took over the show from Robo Ranks, I was scared, Joe, because. The shoes I had to fill were big. I took the role seriously. Couldn't drop the ball. Because that's coming off a long lineage of DJs that repped this music and carried it to the next place. I was scared. My mother used to listen Daddy Ernie in the yard. Even when he was off of Choice FM, bruv. I come from understanding. I'm a turntablist originally as a DJ. So the whole mixing and scratching and all the rest of it, it does that. It's not a problem. You get what I'm saying? But then radio broadcasting is different. Going on a radio just to boost your ego and say, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me is different to broadcasting and presenting the music objectively. There's some records that I don't like. But editorially, I have to play them and put an editorial conversation behind the reason why I'm playing it. Because it connects to the culture in a different manner. Who's the next one to do all of that? It's notable that in my time um, as lifestyle and entertainment editor at The Voice newspaper, I've never even thought about that. Speaks. Um, Before I'm, I'm gonna ask about systems and structures to round it off because I'm conscious we've been talking for a while. But before I get there, <laughs> Sean Paul, uh, Shaggy, Bob Marley. That's who runs, <laughs> that's who runs the, the, the reggae charts when you look at longevity, right? They're sitting at the top of there, they, between the three of them, they have peaks and try, I mean, I don't think no one ever moves Bob Marley on, on certain uh, indicators. Um, I did notice though, that Masika was sitting in there for a few weeks. So I wonder, Sean, who's going to break up this that trio of names that I just mentioned? Who's coming and has the potential to bring about that type of longevity? Um, that's a very good question, you know. Um, I think those three artists, Bob, Shaggy, Sean, they all came at very unique times. I think... I miss a record shop, you know? Like I really miss a record shop because there was people in there that came to support the mu music in a different manner. And I think that those artists all benefited from things like that to the point that people are now continue their journey with those artists as streamers. Um, I think you've got to understand how streaming and that works, especially in Jamaica, is different because if you go to Jamaica, so where you will see, you won't see a notable dent in Spotify and all that for certain young artists. But like for somebody you mentioned, Massacre, he would drop something and it would go nuts online, innit? But you may not see it on a Spotify platform. But they are on other platforms. YouTube is a massive, massive tool and platform in Jamaica. And the reason why that well, the reason why I think that is for me, when I go to Jamaica, I put in a Digicel chip in my phone. 
you'll get your monthly subscription or the rest of it. Nine times out of 10, you get free usage of Facebook or YouTube. So if you've got a couple of thousand dollars in your pocket, you're gonna buy 500 pound worth a credit for your phone and you get free YouTube, you're not going to use your data to go over to Spotify. I'm bearing in mind you were, you are probably going there as a guest. So mm. then you're going to get the adverts. Not to say you're not getting adverts on YouTube or whatever, but you're not going to eat into your credit at all. And I think that for a lot of black nations, that part of the telecommunications is always part of the package. So that's why I think that you see big numbers on YouTube rather than on the streaming platforms. And like the man name is on the corner, literally, like you'll go into a studio yard, like there's about six, seven artists in there, you know? Everybody's watching YouTube, everybody, literally, Instagram and YouTube, it's visuals, isn't it? So I think, especially with these new set of you, even for myself, my interviews don't connect as much as they should do online because my interviews are not visually on YouTube. You have to go to the BBC Sounds app if you want to listen to my interviews. So there's other platform, other platforms that are on YouTube that click, click, click all day because people could click like that. So I think it's just a, it's a generational thing and we have to kind of wait for that change to happen. You get what I'm saying? Because Massacre, who you just mentioned, he's owned the whole of like December going into the new year because his album is of, of solid quality. You get what I'm saying? And we, even going back to our conversation, his management, Corey Todd, they run a tight ship, bruv. So you, you can see it in the brand. You can see it. If you look at the ones that are winning, mm. you know what I've won. I can't just get, even though Massacre is an artist I've been dealing with from like 2011, 2012, he's my friend. I can't just get to Massacre like that, bruv. Martha chat to Corey. You get what I'm saying? Governor, I can't get to govern you just like that. I have a number, but it's easier for me to follow protocol and go to Squidel. You get what I'm saying? And there's a bunch of other artists that have got their stuff together. And that's the way that, it, if we're going to think about breaking anything, changing the mold, whatever, that's what's got to happen. That, you know what? The systems and the structures have got to work because it's all good and well that Shawnee, it's all good and well that whoever in our genre, Bobby Condors, um, ZJ Liquid, um, whoever, Waggy T, that we can get to them. What about the people that work at my radio station that hasn't got the links that I've got? How do they conduct business with a governor, with a massacre, with a coffee? Like, you have to have a good relationship with management. And if that's not in place, then you get lost in a system like that because nobody don't know who to call for you. That's why you have to have systems and structures in place. You, you've heard it here. Um, if you haven't read it, go and read it in the Voice newspaper for February. Shawnee B's sounding off. Um, on the state, don't say on like the state. I don't do no, no, no. No, we've got no. This is the, this is Sean, and I, 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 this is the running joke between me and Sean, right? He, he's you've mentioned it a few times in this interview. You were scared, right? Scared. And I say this to my son all the time. You're not my son, nothing like that. I'm just saying. I say this to my son because I have to say it to myself. Everything we desire in life, and I got this from Will Smith, right? Is on the other side of fear. Everything, everything we want is on the other side of fear. Whatever stops us push through that, you'll actually probably get to that utopia, that, that place that you're searching for, <laughs> at least a little bit closer. So I understand your reservations with writing the piece. I really do, because, yo, my dad told me for no way you're deaf, right? No way you're deaf. So we can't talk our talk how we want to talk our talk all the time. Because you have to know you're deaf. You have to know where you're there, you know right? Our, our thing is in the streets, and I don't want nobody to believe that I'm bigger or better than anybody mm. or anything like that. My thing is, I love this music, you know? I love my people more importantly. And I think that, you know what? For what we have contributed to the world musically, the Caribbean should be so much more further 
because it's all good and well. Surely could go to Jamaica, go and get Beris, go and get Intense, go and get whoever, get all the big names. I win. I'm laughing. Men look good. But what, what is that win? If the whole culture is not winning and that other platforms can't come to my beloved place of the Caribbean and come and get all that Wakanda gold that I get to be able to uplift the whole of our people to know that there's an industry that your son, my son, and whoever's watching their children has got something to be able to come and clasp and hold as their own. That's the responsibility that I've got, that I leave something there for the next generation of proper wealth for them, generational wealth. That's what I'm talking about here. Musically, culturally, that our youths them have got something to go and grab onto and say, I feel it in that. You get what I'm saying? And if we leave it in a disarray, seemingly like how we're leaving the rest of the world right now with ozone, this, that, the other, rare, tear, tear. What's our youth them going to have, Joe? I fully understand what you're saying, Shoni. And, and I think we're going to be talking about this again before the year's done. Right? <laughs> Excuse the drilling. I don't know if you can hear that at your end. But um, yeah, we're going to be talking about this again before the year's done. I think March's issue is going to be interesting. Um, I won't go into it in this interview, but I want, I'm, I want to put your neck on the block, mate. I want to know who the next Sean Paul, who the next Shaggy, who the next Bob Marley, I want to know who they are and what they look let me, like. Let me tell you this story. The reason, yeah. The reason why I say that before you even, before you interject is because I see what a Spice is doing. I see what a Shensea is doing. And I look at the way that they're carrying themselves and I say to myself, something's changed in the background for those artists as they're tired of doing it the way it's always been done. They're going a different way. There's clearly a level of professionalism around the way that they're delivering their products. Um, who's the young girl from Trinidad? Um, Nyla Blackman. Nyla, but Nyla, right? I see the way she's moving. There's a difference between that element of the music and, you know, the, the polar opposite. There's a distinct chasm in terms of professionalism. There needs to be a closing of that gap. And I think there are certain names, and I've mentioned a few, who I think are pushing in that direction. Um, so it'd be interesting the next time we talk, the next time we talk, that's right, for you to... I'll tell you this right now, I want to answer that question because in dancehall... Mm. <laughs> you know, <I'm> gonna, <laughs> you know, why do you see why? I don't have to put my neck on the line for this, <laughs> that that fam, got a man, hey, what, let me tell you this, Joe, and this, again, you know something, real talk, no word of a lie, mm. I've got broken down relationships because I've spoken about a next person in such a manner that Yo, I'm a re that person, I'm a work, re their work ethic, they had the big songs, this, that, the other. I've had a team, like, totally, like, done with me, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm for real. I remember doing the interview, and when I left the interview, my bridging in Jamaica was like, Shani, you should have never talked about that, like that, that. I go, but I'm just a talk who's hot. I wasn't even down talking to anybody, bro. I was just literally just saying, that person, yeah, is heated right now, like a gas stove, bro. It what, to this day, people got me up over it. So that's yeah. why I was so scared to do this because it's, this is not the industry to have a big mouth in, bro. <laughs> when you play a song, cool, but don't, you get what I'm saying? But I just want everybody to know, is to come and love it and we see the potential. And I want to make sure, say, our youths, them, have got a piece of culture to hold on to and it's not wasted away. Because I'll ask you this, Joe, before you go. What was the big reggae train from 2021? <laughs> the big reggae train for 2021. <sighs> and the mere fact that you have to sit down and draw breaks and think like that, by rights, you'd be able to clot off 10 of them. Bam, 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 bam. Mm. You see, these are the things that worries me, bro. And I know Maybe, the things that I, 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 see, while you're worried about that. I, I'm more worried about because if, if 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 we're in an industry where 
And I understand, trust me, I'm not culturally divorced from what we're talking about, right? <laughs> this is two black men who all buying another this. So we all understand, right? But I'm, I'm, I look at that and I think we, we're still, 2022, we still can't talk at all. And that's, that's an issue, isn't it? So if, 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 if a man who's dedicated his 20, 30 years to an industry to elevate to the, to the, to the top, the highest highest, and is selling the brand of this music all around the world, cannot talk truth, then maybe we are, it is where it is because it is where it is. Do you know somebody that inspires me to talk my truth? And when you have somebody like this by your side, it kind of empowers you. You see, Rory Stonelove. Mm. Rory Stonelove looked at me about five years ago, phoned me, you know, and said, Shawnee, you're the next one. I'm like, just phone me out of the blue. You're the next one. Rory Stonelove is like Maradona to me. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, hell you, bro. Come on. Pele. That's Muhammad Ali to me. I'm a selector. I'm a DJ. This is a man that created juggling, all of that for us. When he tells you that, you're like, whoa, anything I can do to help and assist you, Shawnee, I have got your back. What I need you to do is to be honest with this music. And when you hear music that's not good enough, strong enough, that you tell people and you just don't fall into this realm of just playing mediocrity and all of the rest of it. And when you've got a genera like that by your side, not to say he's gassing me, but He's telling me to hold strong in it. Mm. I know, I know the platform that I've got. And I, Joe, I never believed in the platform that I had, you know. When people used to tell me certain things, I'm like, look around me, I'm just a kid from White City Estate that loved the music, this, that, the other. And I've had to learn to embrace that, yo, you're one of the guys I'm at the top, Shawnee, globally as well. You get what I'm saying? When you had that kind of level of responsibility, you have to talk your truth, dog. Because it won't change if a man like you don't talk your truth. Mm. I, hope, I hope people recognise it is what it is. You know, you're not trying to destroy it. You're trying to elevate. So, mm. you know, maybe take heed. Some of the people who are involved in this industry need to take heed. I shaggy, last time I spoke to Shaggy a couple of years ago, just as lockdown was kicking in, and he was not lamenting the industry, but he was making a pointed reference to the fact that all of us, if you're in it, artist, media, whatever, manager, whatever. If you're in it, emanating from a Caribbean place, all of us need to step up. Absolutely. And um, yeah, and so, so you know, he didn't absolve himself from that. You know what I mean? And this is a man who's, you know, I have he's done it. realest conversations with him, you know? No, nah, he's, he's a real one. Really? And I can, I can only imagine that, you, that you've you alluded to private conversations in your piece, right? Um, I, mean, I, I can imagine. Them that happened recently was, um, with the Spice um, record, something like it. I actually heard that like a year and a half before it got released in Jamaica outside of Spice's restaurant. And um, I remember ringing him and I said, boy. And I'll I tell you something, yeah? Shaggy rings me more than I ring him. <laughs> That's a good thing. Shani, why you now call me and ask uh, Ferreira? I'm like, brother, you're Shaggy, I don't bother you. But anyway, going back to the convo, um, I said, Shaggy, that one you're gone. No, it's not, Shawnee. It's not. I just done a song with some youths in Australia and it's 20 million already, fam. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. He got Shawnee, we got to put in more work. We got to put in more, what more, what more, what more, what more, what more. And you see when you're, you're, you've stepped your foot outside of your yard, so put, put it, and you've traveled the world, you see what potential could be and what we hype up over as wins are not really wins, bro. You get what I'm saying? No, I, I, I get it. I mean, I remember years ago watching an interview with Dizzy Rascal and he was, <laughs> he was talking about certain things, um, touring festivals and all the rest of it. And he saw a lot of these, you know, what a lot of these, we've got festivals here now and, and people look forward to them and all the rest of it's huge numbers involved, big money. And he was seeing that, you know, over a decade ago. And so, when he was talking to people about doing certain things, his perspective was skewed by his experience, which was, you guys are, you haven't seen what I've seen. So seen. yeah, I totally, I totally understand what but you're saying about Shaggy. But to say all of that, I will say this though, 
nobody, nobody in this world is more influential to music, culture, and food than the Caribbean. Nobody. You know, you're going to find a disagreement in me. No, <laughs> the truth. The world is big like this. The world is big like this. And the Caribbean is over there, fam. Nobody has more influence, nobody, than the Caribbean, bro. Nobody. Well, on that note, let's end it there. I'm sure people are sitting and watching thinking these men are just going to chat, 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 <laughs> chat, chat. We could all day long about Caribbean. Only you could draw me out like this, Joe. Only you. But, but you know what? Wait, listen, and I, and I try not to draw you out too far. You know what I mean? Like, but you bro. know what it is? I'm so passionate about this. Like, that's why I'm afraid for talk. Because when I'm yeah. going to talk, I just yeah. talk, bro. You get me? There ain't no holds barred. Once I'm start, I just, uh, I, I just hope people like genuinely don't beat me bad. I beg you, please. <laughs> You've done too much. You've done too much for the music that emanates from that part of the world for people to think that you're on a destructive mission. You're not. It's clear. So um, there's some gems that people can pick up on and, and use to benefit their life from, from this discussion. Um, and hopefully it continues in that way. Listen, for those of you who feel inspired to go and pick up the voice and find out the rest of uh, Shawnee's five points, go and do so. It's out on uh, the last Thursday of January. Got a whole month to get it. Um, Sean is in there every month, for those who don't know. Um, this is Brockout doing it right in, as forthrightly as we've been speaking today. And there's lots to cover in the future, you know. Is there anything else you want to leave us to, Sean? I want to leave you with this real conversation. Myself and my manager had an um, end of year discussion about what we're going to be doing in the new year. And the voice came up in it and he goes, do you want to continue writing the voice? And I sat down and I thought about it. And I am busy doing a multitude of other things. And I came back and said, you know something? The voice is like a part of our community. And if I don't spend my time to uphold and lift up the voice to that next place, then you know what? It will be a travesty. And that's why I do this every month because it's a paper that my mother used to read. I used to read, it's part of our community we need to preserve our community that's why i stand side by side with you guys <laughs>